Welcome back to Education Matters. Did you correctly answer true? Worldwide, 52% of internet users access it using a mobile device. In the U.S., that number is actually 75%. Um, our next two guests are from a middle school in Wake County that is successfully using technology to enhance the learning experience for its students. So we have, uh, we have the principal of uh, Pine Hollow Middle School, Andrew Livengood. We appreciate you being here. And Harden Barker, who is a math teacher also at Pine Hollow Middle. Thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, so you just heard from uh, some of the folks at the state level about what their goals are. Um, and I know you and I talked, uh, Andrew, last week as we were planning the show. You're doing a lot of these things. Tell us about what's going on at Pine Hollow. We are. It's exciting. Um, we have a lot of technology in the classroom. I can walk down the hall every day. I stick my head in any classroom. Kids are uh, spread out, uh, working either individually or in small groups, whether it's on an iPad or a, a laptop, what have you. But at Pine Hollow, um, it's not an extra add-on. Uh, technology is something that we've come to depend on, and it's essential to the learning process at our school. Right now, you're, you're, you're a fairly new school, right? First, you've been in, around for a year, so it was Correct. obviously it was built with some connectivity. But really, all, all of the schools, certainly around in, in most of the state, have um, sort of the wireless access now in all the classrooms. So you don't have right. any sort of uh, barriers in terms of that kind of technology. Support. No, we do not, and that's huge because if you don't have connectivity, it's very difficult. Um, to be tied down to a cord, something that's got to plug into a wall. So we are completely uh, wireless. All right, well, Hard, let me go to you. You're a math teacher. Um, um, my daughter loves math. I was challenged in math, but let me ask you, so is, um, is technology really uh, primarily used in, uh, in a school, I like in, in math and science, or is it uh, uh, sort of uh, across the board? How, do you, how have you seen it as, as a math teacher yourself and then uh, with your, your colleagues? It's definitely a tool that can be used effectively, especially with how students interact with their world today. Everything that students do, especially with social media, since they are so integrated with, with computers in their personal lives, the more that we use that in the educational setting, the more they're going to be usually inclined to pay attention. It's, it's a much better way to facilitate and get their attention as compared to doing it the old way like when you and I were yeah. in school. I mean, they, I, mean, that, I mean, they live it. I have a 16-year-old and I mean, with the things we were talking about, 75% of, of people access the internet now using mobile devices. I mean, it wasn't just a few years ago when mobile devices, you couldn't, you really couldn't access the internet. And if you could, yeah. it was just, you know, small, you really, I mean, it's, it's a, it, they've never, they have not, I like, they've never not known that, right? They, they haven't. <laughs> and so one of the things, I guess, as a teacher, you need to be, uh, meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. So, well, how does, um, as the principal, um, you know, you've got to make sure that your teachers are comfortable with this technology. How do y'all go about, um, you know, what do you do? What does the, the, the school district do, the state do to, to help teachers? You know, you know, some of them who are old like me, you know, uh, to, to use all these tools effectively. It's actually not hard uh, to get the teachers excited because um, as uh, Harden just said a second ago, the kids live in this world, right, with their, with their thumbs. And, um, so with the teachers, there's so many resources out there that are available to them, um, especially your, your younger teachers that have recently come through a College of Education teacher program. Um, at Pine Hollow, we're three to one. Uh, that is the model um, for our school district. What does that mean? Um, it means um, one device for every three kids. Okay. So it forces them to collaborate and communicate with one another. The four C's are another big buzzword in education today. Mm -hmm. So the technology fits really well into that. The challenge for me as a principal a lot of times is to educate my parents as to, not literally my parents, but my kids, <laughs> sure. um, Pine Hollow parents, as to uh, what education looks like today. Because as you said a second ago, it's changed over the years. And so I've got some teachers with flipped classrooms where instead of standing up in front of the students and lecturing, uh, the teacher uh, delivers uh, the direct instruction, the lecture via video that the kids watch at home, and then they come in the next day and the teacher can work with uh, students who experience difficulty in one particular area, um, and that's new for parents as well. Um, many of our parents are used to coming in and listening to a lecture and then going home and doing the, the homework, so trying to um, educate the parents as to how things have changed is certainly a principal's challenge today. Right. Well, Harden, as, as a teacher, I mean, you've obviously, you, you're using, I mean, I, I'd love to hear an example for how, how do you use technology to say that something that's different than than you know maybe what you would have done uh, several years ago before these things were available something that's really cool is the use of manipulatives in a classroom especially in math the more concrete you make it the better that the kids are going to learn it especially students who 
Math isn't their forte, like myself when I was growing up. Um, you have kits, physical objects that we have at Pine Hollow that, we, that the kids can use. Um, they also have virtual manipulatives that you can connect a tablet, iPad, for example, to our classroom so when you're, talking, you're, you're literally talking about something to hold in your hand to move. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about something virtual. This like, is well, yeah, we, like, we have fraction tiles that, let's say you okay. have from 1 16th through 1 half, you can have the kids that are using that and then that matches it on the television. The okay, so gotcha. you can do that with on a TV and a bigger screen so that they can follow along with you. They can also drag and drop with their fingers using that tool themselves. Sometimes just using it in a concrete way physically doesn't work, but if they can drag along the uh, tablet or device, then that makes it click for them. So the more ways that we can find to get the kids for them to understand it, the better off we are. So it's, it's true. I mean, it's a tool. I mean, it's not like something that you can just turn on. Well, we've got computers now. We've got three to one. We're done. I mean, it's really, I mean, you're, you're a trained teacher. That's what you do. You, right. It's another tool in your toolbox. Exactly. It, it's not the end all be all, but it's certainly a vehicle that helps you drive instruction. And for certain students, it's the best way. And for other students, it is a way. So. Right. I didn't ask you about this you know, when we set up the show, but uh, uh, did, have you experimented with bringing your own device? You know, a lot of the kids, you know, now I, I've heard, you know, a lot of schools will take away the iPhones and things from kids, but actually other schools are experimenting with, well, look, if you got them, yep. you know, we can use them. So actually, it actually extends some of the resources. I mean, our classrooms are kind of strapped anyway. Yep. Uh, we will be going through our district offers uh, training to schools that wish to become BYOD schools. Pine Hollow will be going through that this spring. We've kind of been what I refer to as BYOD light recently because our primary feeder elementary schools are all BYOD. And that? so um, it, it's just the world we live in nowadays. It's kind of a shame, I think, when kids walk around with this mini computer in their pocket and that's the world they live in, it's a shame to expect them to turn that off when they walk through the doors of the schoolhouse. So our challenge is to try to make sure we educate kids on how to use the devices appropriately yeah. um, when they're at school. And, and that's probably another one of those things, again, trying to get parents uh, comfortable. The classroom doesn't look anything like it did uh, when, uh, when they were in school or their parents were in school. I mean, there's, it, there may be desks and it's inside of a building, but beyond that, there's a lot of different things happening. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, well, I, I, think, I love the whole concept of the bring your own device. Again, it's something that, um, um, getting parents comfortable saying they're not actually playing and they're not snapchatting. Uh, they're right. actually learning and um, uh, we appreciate what you are doing, um, you know, uh, leading a school uh, through this. And again, as a teacher, thank you always. We appreciate all our teachers. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank Thanks you. for having us. All right. After the break, this week's leadership spotlight. <laughs>